everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and I'm here with another hashtag Creative Arts Collaboration event. This is the Fabulous Save the Hooters, which we're going to do in around an hour. It's fabulous, it's fun, it's easy, it's for beginners, and guess what? It's not even all that's out there. If you search hashtag Think Pink Art, it's giving you a free ticket to a video art festival where tons of other artists on YouTube have also created art in the theme of breast cancer awareness and in general, just cancer awareness. So this is just a painting that gives and gives and gives. So I hope you'll come back with your paints or brushes and meet me at this easel really soon. Plus I hope you'll search a bunch of the other artwork that's out there right now. All right, see you in a second. Hey, I'm so glad you decided to come join us for this amazing art project today. Save the hoots. Uh, this is a project I'm really excited about with the Creative Arts Collaboration, your video art festival. Hashtag Think Pink Art. That's your free ticket, right? To go see all this amazing creative content. And there's a lot of people out there who have made stuff that is going to just blow your mind. I know a lot of the artists talk to people. I know a lot of the artists are pulling from their own personal experience. I think that you're going to hear stories and see artwork that changes everything about how we artistically talk about this experience. Uh, here at Heart Party, our big call is that we would like you to uh, take care of your tatas. We would like you to take care of your hooters, your headlights, and make sure that you make screening a really big part of your everyday life and we know john is here in the studio with me today yes i am yes he is because you know what guys need to screen too don't they john yes they do they do this can happen to anyone and just a little i'm just asking you to grope yourself at the end of the day i'm asking you to grope yourself but with some medical efficacy so in the i card i have included a YouTube tutorial that I found that's really great on how to do a self-exam at home. And listen, if you've been putting off that mammogram, join me. I'm going. I wanted to put it off too. I'm not. Look, ladies, we get it. I get it. That really, we need another way of doing this. But until then, listen, go. Just don't put it off. Don't put it off for another event or thing that you have to take care of. Put yourself up here. John and I just want you guys to take care of yourselves. Yep. Yeah. I know he said that quietly, but he really means it. He Good wants you to. We, we talked about this a lot before we even suggested the project to the Creative Arts Collaboration. Um, I cannot believe the love I got back from that. It was, yeah, uh, it's been amazing, all of the outreach. Amazing. And already the comments that we're getting. So look, I know in our own community, we have people who are you know, finding something and getting tested that are worried, um, who are going through chemo, have finished chemo, who have are facing possible mastectomies or having, you know, gone to the other side of that. We know all the stages, have, having family members going through it, having lost family members, like we get it. We read the letters, we pay attention. And it's just our hope that this painting raises awareness about early detection and also maybe gives us something positive artistically to do to sort of work through our feelings about all this because it's it's emotional isn't it john oh yeah, yeah. so yeah and we're not going to forget wishes we got wishes for you today but i just have to share with you the largest cup of coffee ever Car co coffee con it's i don't super sippy sippy it's a suit i will be so caffeinated by the end of this you'll be painting really fast it'll be really fast we'll be all done in like 20 minutes it's gonna be 20 minute painting of two little owls won't that be really fun <laughs> no it, it should be okay it should be all right that wasn't even like a post work it was just like all you there that was all me there but i'm not quite as fast as that guy from the hot wheels commercial material 16 by 20 canvas you know cup of water to sketch in, I have a watercolor pencil in pink. I have acrylic paint. It's acrylic paint and it's cadmium red medium, dogs in purple, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo blue, titanium white. And this is on, you guys ask me this a lot. This is on acrylic palette paper by Strathmore. I get these at Michael's for a few bucks. They're just disposable things and that's what works for me. And that is what I like. Guess where I'm going to hide all this information? In the description. Guess where I'm going to hide information about the other creators besides you just putting the hashtag 
in the search bar, like we talked about in the intro, besides you doing that and getting your entrance to the video art festival, there's more information in the description. Plus, guess what we already have? What we have ready to go, John? What do we have ready to go? What do we have ready to go? You're, I'm going to ask you again. What do we have ready to go, John? I have no idea. You have no idea, but you're just so quiet about it. I'm trying to get you amped up. We have a traceable that Chuck Carson did um, from the original painting. He help, He always helps me out. And, you know, he's going to have a great program going. Guess who? Guess what else? What else? We have to thank Ian Garland because uh, he created a project which kind of got my brain cooking this way. And so I want to thank him early on. You know, I would love to be part of this. You should tell me ahead of time. I, I feel like you got to jump in, John. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean. <laughs> so um, John really wanted a script for today because we're not live and he doesn't have the comments to respond to and he's back there in the isolation booth. Yep, just sitting here. It's really actually, if I'm not gonna show you film of it, but it's it's kind of a sad, depressing little space. Yeah. <laughs> so let's all send John some love and I'm gonna drink my giant cup of coffee. Giant cup of coffee, sippy. So what I'm, brushes I'm painting with today, I'm gonna be painting with synthetic fiber, Teclon fiber brushes, again, list of brushes that you should have in your studio in the description where I always like to put it. Um, and I am going to be showing you how to sketch in these owls, even if you don't want to use the traceable, which I think sounds pretty good. So let's sketch those guys in. How's that sound, John? Sounds pretty good. So it's really weird talking to John on a pre-recording because besides the people that I know are on the other side of the camera <laughs> that I'm imagining there right now, I have an actual person in the studio. So do you want to zoom in on the close-up camera? Let's zoom in on the close-up camera. But see already how useful John actually is? Because, well, here's the thing. I've got to sketch them in oh, first the and then do details. So I want it to see, everyone to see. So the first thing I'm going to do, right, guys, is I've got about three fingers from the bottom. Let's make a little mark. My three fingers, which would be, you know, if you were measuring... Looks like it's about two inches from the bottom, right? That's where the little bottoms of my owls are going to sit. And that's where I want them to sit. And I'm going to make this owl 13 inches tall. This owl is Mildred. Mildred. Mildred is a breast cancer survivor. I'm going to sketch an oval. Right, I'm going to sketch an oval first. Maybe an egg shape is a more accurate description of what I'm doing here. Okay. Making a nice, fat, healthy egg shape. Mildred would appreciate if she definitely wants to say that she's curvy or healthy. Right? I, always, I thought of the, uh, when, when you first were drawing them, I thought it was a very Russian looking, because of the Russian egg nesting dolls. Nesting dolls, that is a good way of thinking of her. She's a barn owl, is Mildred. Ah. Right, and she's encouraging her friend Melanie that we're going to put over here to go get um, a mammogram early. Earlier than maybe is just recommended because uh, Melanie's got some breast cancer in her family. So she's going to go early to get detected, mm -hmm. to get that, to get a mammogram. And, uh, you know, again, not fun. I totally get it. <laughs> now, when I'm doing a barn owl, right? And, and we really want to show that Mildred is very loving and she's very kind, right? I'm going to make a heart. I'm going to make a heart. We're going to put our wishes in right after we sketch in the owls. Because I didn't want the words to mess with our ability to sketch these in. So we can really see them. This is very key, this heart here that I'm making. Mm -hmm. That's key to making the barn owl kind of face. Interesting. Now I'm going to make a light line. It's going to go right underneath the bottom of the heart here. Just goes right here. And that kind of lets me anchor my wings. That's a drawing trick that we do. Where we give ourselves an anchor so that if we've got to make shapes that maybe are similar on either side, mm -hmm. that that's easier to do to make that mirror to help our brain anchor this out. Now I'm going to take the wing out to a little point over here. If you've done other owls with me before, you're going to find this pretty familiar. And I'm very lightly going to continue this on just, just to say, oh, I know that this wing and this wing look similar. Right? Now let's sketch in Melanie over here. 
right? Melanie is a very busy, busy owl, but she's going to take some time to take care of herself because Melanie matters, right? Sometimes it's hard to remember, especially for moms. Actually, dads, it's just hard for us as human beings to remember that we matter. It's true. You know, it takes time. I mean, I, I, it really, John, honestly, it was like, you've just got to go in. I kept pushing off my mammogram, pushing off my mammogram. Yep. And he's like, you got to go. There's time to go. Time to go. You have to make time. You have to make time to take care of yourself. And I'm like, that's really true. That's the hardest thing now. So I'm going to make another little anchor line right here at about a third down from the top. I'm going to come around and I'm going to make almost a teardrop shape and that is going to be Melanie's wing over here. I'm going to come make a mirror shape of that on this side and a little heart down. Now guys, don't panic about this if you're like, I'm not going to draw this in. That's what the traceable is for. That is exactly what the traceable is for, isn't it, John? The traceable is, yes. They're, yeah. And, and they're, so, they make it, you know, they're also great for just, you know, reference. Or coloring. If you've got little brushes I with you. Say, yeah, I, we, we use our, a lot for our little brushes, don't we? We do. We give them out as coloring pages. My kids love the Heart Party paintings as coloring pages. I'm making two large, almost the bottom of a beer can size owls here. Right? Comically, those are her hooters. And then I'm making a little downward facing triangle for her beak. Pretty simple stuff. But the barn owl eyes are different. Now I'm going to zoom in on this. Right. Ooh, that's not zooming in. That's zooming in. You can see it. Okay. And I'm going to make two parallel lines about a half inch long across from each other. Yep. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to create an almond mm. shape that point goes down to the point. Can you guys see how that's like an almond? Yeah, and you're just sort of using the outside of the uh, egg sort of shape as a reference point. A when to stop. Yeah. Nice. So this is going to give me that classic barn owl eye because it's a little different than our regular eyes. We've got a pygmy owl right here. The other one is a pygmy owl. Yeah, I actually have. Uh, you know, it's crazy. John, I'll tell you, I actually go on Pinterest and research the type of owl. Like, even though I cartoon this out as much as I do, I base this on an actual pygmy owl. Yeah. And I base this on. It's just weird the research that you do. I work as hard on heart parties I think I ever did on my fine art. So see, we've got that sketched in. Isn't that gorge? I love it. Good. I love it. So to the wishes. And this is going to be a big one. And of course, the first and most big wish that we have um, is that everybody goes and gets, you know, that, check. You, that you check. You... Yep. <laughs> give yourself the, ex which is more like this. You give yourself the, ex I'm not giving medical advice here. I'm just saying. It's in the iCard. Follow the iCard. Check that out. Let's if, see a doctor. Go, you know, if you need a screening, go get a screening. Don't just, put yourself off. Just go. That's what we're going to say is that our heart party, I'm going to use a blue here because I want it to paint out with my turquoise. Okay. So um, that our heart party viewers get screened. That we get a bunch of screens, screenings coming out of this. I would love that. If you guys would all do that, that would make me really happy. Our next wish is that they're all clear screens that's right that is our next wish that all the screens are clear and of course my next wish is is that they find a cure for all cancers. find a cure for all cancer which i actually think will happen they're gonna find some magical dna unlock and yeah Bing, or some nanobot that will come fix it. I think we'll see that in our lifetime. Yep. I think we're going to see an end to this disease the way they saw an end to polio. You know, there was a time they didn't think that they could do anything about polio and they ended polio. And I believe in the heart of the human beings that are fighting this disease, that are trying to come up with a cure. And I think that, I think we're going to see that. We have printers that can print out organs. I think we're going to see it. Yep. Now. What's the next wish? My next wish is that um, I'm going to secretly put her name here. But listen, we well, 
you know, the thing is, is we've got some members that are currently going through chemo right now. And their biggest issue is that they don't feel good. They feel really sick and they can't paint. Yeah. So I guess what I'm wishing there is that, um, that f to feel better during the treatment. And, and if you know someone who's going through treatment, just give them a hug. They need it. Yeah. They're going through something that's really tough. Yeah, so true. Yeah. I remember when this painting is for my friend Lori in... Uh, Oh, she's just one of my favorite people, but she did, uh, oh well, she's an angel now, which she really was on earth. Um, I miss her. I really do. John knows that. It was really hard. Yeah. So be there for your friends. I remember Lori felt it was very uncomfortable for people around Lori when she was sick, and a lot of her friends kind of disappeared. So I wish that all of our Heart Party community members, everyone who comes here, ha are, is surrounded by people who love them and supported. Yes. Because I know that was something that, that Lori really felt. Lots of hugs and good mail and friendly visits. Right. So that's, that's the important thing is just really be there for your friends going through it. It's, it's challenging. Um, I know it can be scary, but you know, be brave enough to have the scary conversations and be brave enough to be there for your friend. Do you uh, remember, I'm going to get a one inch filbert and I'm going to mix the turquoise. Are we, are we, are we, are we done with all of our wishes? Do you have another wish you think we should put in there? Uh, that I might have missed. I think uh, no. I think we. I think we have a lot of. I think we have good stuff there. I just want to make sure that we were to. I want to wish that this painting brings happiness to all the people that need it. Yes. And that, find happiness that this and art collaboration brings healing to all the people that need it. Absolutely. I just really wish for that, even though that might, might seem simplistic and childish. That's what I genuinely wish for. I think that's good. I'm going to mix some turquoise up. With your one-inch filbert? With my one-inch filbert. And I'm going to get a little water in my brush. What, what are your colors there? I, we already did colors. Oh, yeah, we have colors. That's right. We have colors, which are in the description. Pull out a little yellow and a little blue. John is so used to being there for you guys going, tell us the colors. I am. I was just like, you know. And, and, you know, I forget that we also now have post-production awesomeness. So we have post-production awesomeness. That's where you get the burnt umber. It's yeah. Fire. Yeah, it's burnt, um, it's burnt sienna, but we don't burnt have any burnt sienna, sienna today. Nope. So do you remember, uh, so my friend, I had this friend at the gym and her name was Lori. And we worked, believe it or not, back in the, John will tell you, I used to be really into my workouts. Mm -hmm. And I would go, um. Like every day it was a thing and I made this friend Lori there and she was just a hoot. She was just the funniest person ever. Just joy and happy. And she was the kind of person that could flirt where it was the sort of flirting that just made people feel good inside. She just literally touched everybody around her with light. You know, she could, she could make you feel prettier when you came in feeling like really run down. She could make you feel smarter. She just would come in and be so kind, and she was just such a joy. She might have possibly sexually harassed the Chick-fil-A cow, <laughs> <laughs> which I was always so funny, because she'd always be like, hey, cow, <laughs> are you cute in there, cow? I bet you're adorable in there, cow. <laughs> it was just really funny. She just always brought a lot of joy, and it was a big shock when she got diagnosed, when she got sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I didn't know what to do about it. I, I didn't know how to handle it. I don't, you know, um, it's, 
or I don't know that anybody knows how to handle it. Well, yeah, you just don't, you want to say something that's comforting, but you don't even know what comforting thing that you can say is. Yeah. How do you comfort somebody who's, who's gotten news like that, right? It was very it, challenging. Yeah, I think if you, you know, unless you've gone through it, that's a challenging thing to comfort someone. And you just feel really inane every time you talk. But I didn't know at the time, like, it wasn't about whether everything I said was smart or brilliant or the most healing thing ever. It was just about being there and talking. Yeah. Just them not being alone. Yeah. And not being afraid, you know, so much so that I disappeared. So in in the fact that I didn't know what to do and I was feeling very unempowered, because I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. I don't have any way to help my, my friend, like, in any, any way that at the time felt real. Um... My, I went to my mom and we decided that one of the worst parts of her illness were the bills. Oh, yeah. They were just awful. Um, the insurance company was awful and just the whole thing. And it was just decimating her, just this information. And then if it wasn't bills from the insurance company, it was just terrible news from the doctor. Yeah. And it had really ruined her mailbox. I don't really know how to explain it, but it just made everything in her mailbox a misery. And I, I had heard her talking about, you know, how unhappy she was with her mailbox. So what my mom and I did is we bought a mailbox. And uh, John will remember this. We embellished the heck out of it. That's beautiful. All pinks and glitters and just blammed it out. And when my mom and I put our mind to something, we can really do a thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, so you can see I'm just painting in this all with just this color. You're just touching it. Yeah, I'm just painting around with this color. Um, so we made this, and then my uh, stepdad, George, went in and installed it in the middle of the night, and the mailbox said Happy Mail. Mm -hmm. I hadn't known any crafters. I didn't know about the YouTube construct of Happy Mail at the time. I mean, this was, this was years and years ago. This is when I was, like, 32 when this was all going on. And, uh, and we installed it in the middle of the night. And immediately, like, everybody got it. They got what that box was for. Yeah. And it made such a difference uh, for her to have a safe space to say, you know, she could open that box and people could put gifts or they could put um, notes or something positive. So she had a space that she could trust wasn't going to be booby-trapped with bad news. And that was that was a really good project. And that's how I handled it. You know, until I kind of learned how to handle it a little bit better. But it, it definitely took a while. Now, I'm looking at the uh, background pattern that you're putting in there with your, with your brush there. Oh, it I'm looks, just... It looks like up top it's a lot more uh, brush strokey and painterly than it is down at the bottom. Yeah, the reason being if I get all crazy down here, I'm going to mess up my owl. Ah. <laughs> That's all it is. So. You know, and, and it's still a little bit there. You know, the trick is with this, John, is that for new artists is the coverage. Sometimes the coatings on these canvases aren't very good, so they absorb all the paint. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the brushes don't carry nice paint loads, so they don't get it on the canvas correctly. And sometimes the paint doesn't have enough pigment or binder, so it doesn't cover. And the big thing is for people trying, who are new to painting, is not to feel like it's them, like somehow they're just unable to paint, but just to know that sometimes the materials can fight back. No one ever thinks, oh, it's the paint. They always think it's me. They never go, oh, the paint is giving me grief. And now, right now you're just trying to get paint down. I'm just trying to get paint down, which is why I'm using one-inch filbert. But listen, if you guys are having trouble painting around your owls with the one-inch brush, you can do the outline around the owls with a smaller brush and come back. Sometimes I'm just trying to get a background in expeditiously. Right? And look at that. So that's that gorgeous color. This is just a really hot color this year, and I really like this color. It's really, really what it is. I noticed you were grabbing a lot of water there during you were when you were uh, mm -hmm. laying that down for the coverage. Does that, and that helps? So what I'm looking for is a consistency I'm looking for in the paint is like olive oil. Olive oil. Or a soft body consistency. So you'll see heavy body paints, soft body paints. All craft paints are soft body paints, which would be fine, except they darken a lot when they dry, and which is called color shift. Or sometimes they don't have enough pigment, so that you're like you're painting and it's like it didn't even cover. You're like, what is going on? Crazy. 
This is the biggest cup of coffee in the universe. <laughs> well, it's the third biggest because I believe I have two cups larger. <sighs> really? It's going to be one of those days? Well, I do. <laughs> the one that Honey made and the other one you bought me. That's true. So I've got a block in my house. That's true. Honey made you that cute cup. And again, Mildred here, um, as I understand it, purple is the color of survive, you know, if for if you're a survivor. So I wanted to show that in Mildred by, and so I'm calling her purple. And I also want that positive message. And I'll tell you why, because sometimes I think um, if you go on Google, and you look up anything, it pretty much always comes out as a uh, certain death. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. They make everything seem super scary on Google, in my opinion. I'm putting on a little more white. So, I just wanted... Um, well, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Every time you get an itch and you look it up, you decide you're dying. Yes. I didn't say that. <laughs> you're always like, I have... I have Titsy Titsy Fever. I'm like, I just, you haven't been anywhere you could get that. I'm making a very light ducky yellow. I'm making a very light ducky yellow that I'm going to paint the heart all in. And you're like, wait, but it's white in the picture. Right? Yeah. The reason is, is that paint is always better with layers. Acrylic painting especially. You would never do this with an oil. You wouldn't paint these owls this way with oil paints at all. Not get the result you're looking for? You would not get the result that you are looking for. Oils and watercolors require a different... Um, do, you, uh, do you remember in math when they called the order of operations? Uh, yep. Yeah, it's like that. There is a layering order in all paint, a process order, and you have to respect it. Respect? You do, or it will just mess with you. And so I'll get a lot of people like, I'm painting an oil paint. And they're like, what happened? I can usually paint. And you seem so easy to follow. And I'm like, it's because you can't paint oils like you paint acrylics. You didn't respect the paint. You didn't respect the paint. Because the oils, they're not going to dry, right? They're going to be there. A lot of acrylic is based on being able to layer light colors over dark colors, dark colors over light colors, and having those layers be dry Whereas with the oil paint, that's not true. And sometimes there's more translucency. Hmm. So it can give you a very unexpected result. So I would do this completely different in oil paint. Interesting. You know? And I would definitely um, do this very differently in watercolor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Because this would just, I would wet this and I would add the different little tones and things that I'm going to layer in acrylic paint. I would actually know where everything's going to go ahead of time and be like layering those all in now and using the paper as my white. I certainly wouldn't paint it in yellow and then try to lighten it. Mm -hmm. So that's just important to know that this is a this is a technique that works really well for acrylics and not great for other paint media. And I just hate to see people be frustrated. I'm going to put this yellow down here as well in the belly. I will pull it down. Belly! Belly, belly. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I get a little weepy around uh, the Lori thing. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Um, it just I, shows how much you loved her. I love Lori. I I hope Lori felt loved. I it's weird you. the people that, you, that can have a profound effect on your life that you don't expect them to. And they can have a deeply meaningful, lasting effect on your life. You know, and, uh, this is certainly, um, cancer is certainly one of those things that it just affects everybody. You know, that was one of the things I, I was learning in the CAC is that people, when they were, the ones that were really resonating with it, they all had stories. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of the stories out there today are going to be amazing. Hashtag think, think art. <laughs> I love these hashtag collaborations. Because it allows a lot of us to get together and curate a collective experience, mm -hmm. right? And then the viewers can go out, like, say the viewers are like, this is great, I love doing these owls, but I've got something going on in my life and I need more project like this. Mm -hmm. Now, there's how many projects? I don't know, a lot. Hashtag pink art. Like, I know Clive did one. Yep. 
right? My mom has got a great one going on there, and Anne's got a great one going on there, and I, you know, um, and these are ones I know about ahead of time. Um, hopefully, uh, there's there's one lady I want to shout out, but I don't know that she's, I, I'm hoping she's going to get it up, but she's, she's having kind of a crazy month, so I can't shout it out now because I don't want to have to annotate later. We'll get them up. We'll make sure we iCard a whole bunch of our friends. Yeah, they're going to be iCards. In the iCards. With the group yourself exam. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is the one appropriate, content appropriate, what I'm going to say, feel yourself up. Yep. Feel yourself up. There, there might even be a headlight checkup. <laughs> a headlight checkup. Right? And, and you're going to, all right, yeah, it's a headlight checkup. Lori would have appreciated that. You know, um, so I'm going to pull out a little dogzine purple and a little white. You could use another purple. It wouldn't ruin the whole painting. Are there, are there, are there some purples that should be avoided? <laughs> I mean, I think you can see them on site. If it's a really ugly purple, don't use that purple. But it's not like there's a, it's not like the yeah. funny blue trap where you can get the wrong blue and then. Yeah. Sort of You're not going to make this turquoise with ultramarine blue. You need a phthalo blue. Right, that sort of thing. Or just go buy a turquoise. But don't try to make ultramarine blue. Make that turquoise. It's not going to happen. Not even a little bit is it going to happen. So, and that can be something that really impacts your painting. Some it, colors are important, some are not. Some colors are important, some are not. Um, and definitely in this case, the purple is not. Any purple that you like will be okay. Well, hopefully you guys are really liking the uh, traceables, the coloring sheets. I, You know what I haven't seen I would love to see is maybe some of the kids are doing the coloring pages. I'd love to see okay. what the kids are doing with that. That's one thing I have not seen. Is I've seen my own kids coloring pages, but I'm just wondering, are you guys using these as coloring pages with your little brushes as well? We should collect up a gallery of little brushes who have painted the, the or, or colored in the um, traceables. Yeah. And we get a lot of artwork shared with little brushes that have shared, like they've done the paintings, because kids can really, you know, if you explain art to kids, they can just do it. Oh, yeah. You're going to hear our kids in the background our playing, because it's a, it's a holiday weekend right now. Yeah. And John likes his painterly, which you can see here. What that means is that you can see the brush strokes and the different color. Mm -hmm. I suppose we could do it like, ooh, you can see it right there. Right. That's kind of fun, actually. <laughs> so this is what I mean by painterly is it's, it's really just an artist's way of saying we embrace the hot mess that it is. It has a lot of paint stroke in it. It has a lot of paint stroke in it. So one of the things that's really blown my mind is already people are sharing these like incredible stories with us of their their experience on on you know the journey with cancer it's a hard subject to talk about isn't it it can be it can be it's part of life for a lot of people you know what what it is is that for me is that i love people and i just want them to be okay yeah. and i get very uncomfortable when i realize that sometimes people are not okay and i can't necessarily fix it yeah. that is a very you it know you love them though well, you know, with your Crohn's, that yeah. that's, you know, a struggle for me sometimes when you're not okay and I can't fix it. Yeah. That's really hard for me, is when he's in pain or there's something going on and I can't, I can't just make it okay. And I get in this weird, bake a cookie, give you food. It, it, it can be hard on both sides of the fence. Yeah. It really is. Um, pull your zoomed up. You want me to do the zoomed up cam? Yeah. There you Ooh, go. we go. See those brush strokes, yeah. those painterly brush strokes. I'm not that stressed about how I'm mixing the dogzine purple and the white here. I just want, you know, to have this purple going on. Mm -hmm. I might make the belly a little darker down here just to give some shading. Yep. Would be a thing that I would do. Um, here's something I learned that I did not know. What's that? One of our very brave hardest when I posted this painting shared a like very technical like you know uh cancer story and she'd had a radical mastectomy mm. which is um you know that is something i am through this learning more and more about 
But what was interesting was that in her recovery, it was very painful for her to move her arms, and she was painting mm -hmm. as part of her physical therapy. And I, I'm familiar with painting as part of an emotional therapy, but I hadn't thought about painting as a physical therapy. Well, yeah, you, you know, your right arm is quite, quite no, it's quite a workout. My right, my left arm is a hot mess, but my right arm is like, it's really all about it. That's not true. Your left arm gets a little bit too, just not in the same way. <laughs> I but, feel, I feel like a blacksmith sometimes. Yeah. But you do, have, yeah. <laughs> you do have to use your right, your upper right shoulder a lot more. A lot more, and it, it definitely is something I don't think about, but it would pull into my pectoral substructure quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a, that's the stuff you just don't think about because you don't walk in another person's shoes, you don't know. Nope. Like, you know, on my part of my art journey, I'm just at a place, and I, we had a, I have a, um, a I don't want to say it's, it's, well, it's a lump, but they've looked at it several times while I was breastfeeding, and they're okay with it, okay. Um, but I, then that means I've got to go in and, you know, keep looking at it. Yeah. Got to watch it. Make sure. You know, and they're never reassuring. <laughs> they're never like. They never want to just say to you, hey, I'm sure it's fine. It's probably no big deal. Yeah. You know, something comforting. Give me a cookie in the in the waiting room. It's never fun. You know, and then and you know, they're always so nice when they get the results, but they don't they don't want to be comforting until they get the results, which I I get that there's a very important medical reason why that that happens. I find good are doctors. Mm -hmm. But it is. I mean, we have we have not smooth, homogenous body parts. So it's odd, you know, whenever you feel like there's a lumpy part in there, and it's like, is it supposed to be lumpy? Or don't is Google it, it. No. Don't the Google is only going to tell you that you're for sure going to die. Yeah. Definitely go see your doctor. Get everything checked out. Everything should be normal. No weird things growing. Yeah. Guys too, and that you know, guys have that uncomfortable exam. They avoid that they should get you just, as well. You go see a doctor. And yeah, I don't think it's you know we you've done it the colonoscopy you've yeah, done it the colonoscopy. yeah you gotta do it and prostate exams too whoa you know on that one I'll have to say men and women it's like a six of one half a dozen of another <laughs> it's sort of like fair there and then I heard from somebody that um because I had to have a ultra I had to have the it was an ultrasound ultrasound Ultrasound. Because I was nursing, so that's that's when they would, I would watch that, yep. and then just that's how the test would schedule out. Is like by every time I'd have to go get one, it was during the time I was nursing, because I nursed each kid for like two years, and then you know, so I haven't had the the flat plate one in a little while, and I'm told it's better. We're going to check it out. Is what I'm told that it's better. All right. I'm going to do, I got to paint a little purple up here, try not to, see that's the thing that gets me in painting when I'm painting and talking and teaching. Which brush are you using? I am using a Wright Creative Mark Teclon Fiber, it's about, I will do my QVC tryout here again, QVC tryout, <laughs> see I can do this QVC, <laughs> I don't actually have anything to sell with QVC. Someday. I would love to someday. 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 Have something. You zoom in? Yeah. Or For the QVC in? world. Fill up to my little, my little thing here. So I'm just getting my purple kind of out of the way. Yeah, that undercoating in. Yeah, the underpainting. That's right. Because you got to just get that first layer on. That is a big part of art, is the first layer. So in fine art painting, it's an underpainting. And I keep doing an undercoating because that's what we do in the car. You do an undercoat in a car, in a, in a fine art painting, you have an underpainting, or an acrylic colored yeah. ground, or a tonal study. There's a bunch of stuff of different ways that we create the layout, and we give them fancy little names. I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to get a smaller bright. This is like a teeny tiny bright. This is a... Trying to do this not too slowly. It's under a half inch. It's like an eighth inch. Tiny, a little bright. And I'm going to get some purple. Oh my 
gonna come back and do some detail work here, right? Mm -hmm. But right now I just wanna get that underpainting in. So I'm gonna paint in the lids and the outline of my eye with this dark purple. Those of you that are really, really into your makeup are gonna find the eyes of this owl just super easy to do. Oh yeah? Yeah. Those of you that are not into makeup are gonna be like, I forget what this is about. So, I guess it depends on how quiet or emo you are. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I can't wait to go out and actually see what everybody else has contributed to this. This festival, the Studio Art Festival, I'm mm -hmm. really pumped about it. Because I feel like this is a way for us to give back. I know I said that in the intro, but this is a way for us to give back to our viewing community. You know, to reach back across the screen and do something that's helpful, you know, in their lives. Hopefully. Hopefully. That's the hope. My hope is that this is ho helpful. Yeah. It makes people feel better. And, you know, like it's out there and people can paint this and, you know, maybe a, a fun artwork to do. Painting mammogram party. I don't know. Yes. That would be a really weird party, but I mean, they do Botox. Yeah, I mean, like, go as a group and get your boobs checked and. Honestly, that probably would be better. <laughs> right? Go have, some, <laughs> go, go have some post post press sippy sippy. That's right, you go get some post press sippy sippy with your friend. Like, go as a group, have a girl party, go get your, you know, breast checked. And then come back and, and do some painting sippy sippy. Yeah, why not? I like that idea so much. I'm going to miss my paint because I think it's drying out. That happens to me because I have this extra palette light on now. Oh, yeah. And so I have to mist every once in a while to just keep it from totally drying out on me. I'm going to now put in my wings. Mm. And... Uh, that should be kind of fun. You know what I forgot to mention? What's that? In my paint. Um, but I, 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 I'll make sure I have it in the description, again, where I like to hide all my stuff. Is that I'm also encouraging you guys to do some soft-bodied black or white. Ooh. So if you have craft paints, they're soft-bodied. And then also at the end, some glitter blanks. Okay. Glitter blanks. But those will have been, we'll do those at the in intro to make sure. Right, that we have that so people aren't like, what? <laughs> now, you can do any red and white you want here. I have CAD, CAD red, and that's a warmer red. But you could use a crimson, which would be more of a traditional pink. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. What, I get a lot of grief for that. What about hues? Hues. If you buy hue, you will save money. If you're painting student paint, it's all hue. Ah. That's how they save money. And, and, you know, because cadmium is actually, if you eat it, could cause cancer, don't eat cad paint. You want to adjust your close up there? Yeah. Just don't eat it. Don't sand it. Don't inhale it. Um, you know, no real studies have been done on that at all. And I think that that's because, you know, most people refrain from eating paint or drinking their paint water. But if you're at all concerned, you know, switch to hue. Switch to hue. I'm actually, I to be real honest, John, I'm a little bit nervous about this project. And you're going. So here we are. And we're painting. John had to walk out just as I was like... I'm so nervous. John walked out, what left happened? me nervous. Why did I leave you nervous? Well, here's the deal. Like, I'm, you know, it's hard to know when you're reaching into something so personal. You never know how people are going to feel about it. Do they know that your heart intention is really good? That, you know, it's your intent to help and be helpful? Well, absolutely. I mean, like, you know, we wouldn't be putting out all this time and energy and effort, you know, if we weren't trying to help. And, you know, 
And we got some of the stranger comments we've ever gotten on this promo announcement. You know, those happen. You know, this is a this is a, a very delicate care, you know, subject for a lot of people. So you have to give people room to feel about it in the ways that they're going to. Yeah. So you know, some people aren't aren't uh, aren't adjusting or, or, or taking the news or handling things in the same way that you might be or, or might need them to. You know, just try to make some space for them. You know. Yeah. You know, if, uh, we'll, if they're uh, if they're not enjoying what we're doing, there's other places to go, right? Yes, there is so much other stuff to go. The one thing I have to tell you, I did a bunch of research mm -hmm. on. You know, I don't want to do something that's already been done a thousand times yeah. on the imagery for breast cancer. And there was not a lot of um, just this type of artwork. Yeah, not a, lot of, not, not, not a lot of upbeat artwork. No. Which, which again, I get it because cancer is a very serious subject. That doesn't, doesn't mean we can't have a positive outlook. That is the one thing I did learn from Lori, man. It's just that, that indomitable positivity. Yeah. You know, she kept it up, and I appreciated that so much about her. Now, I had mentioned this in, <laughs> I mentioned this, and then um, in the announcement, and then we're going to fix it where it's up in the intro or at some point, also neon pink paint, mm. or bright paint, bright. just some sort of flamingo pink color paint, Ooh. so that this owl and this owl are not the same pink. Doesn't seem important, but it is. You know, you're just trying to make sure they're not the same. So it's just not important, this pink. This pink is, you know, it's all good. And I'm just trying to create this sort of bright baby pink. Uh, this is more in the family of flamingo color. And again, you can get this, I, you know, I won't make you guys spend a lot of money. You can get this for about, what, 89 cents? Mm-hmm. Um, at any craft store. So, you know, and then if you mix it into your good titanium white, you're going to get great coverage. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's a little cheat code there. That's a little hack right there. Could you adjust your little close-up camera there a little bit? Yes, I'd be happy to. Mr. Cooney! There we go. I feel like, I feel, you know what's so funny? When we do this together, I feel like I have, like, a game show <laughs> or a talk show, and you're my co-host. You know what I mean? It's funny. But then I'm like, am I talking to, you know, everybody out there or no? But you, well, you're you're so. watching me. Yeah, I think we're doing, I think we're doing okay. We're doing it. It's really hard to uh, know, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I think we just do our best. Do your best. Hopefully, you know, we're a, we're a few episodes in, so... There's a, we have a pattern that we seem to be repeating that people <laughs> seem to be following along to. Some like it, some don't. Mostly don't. You know what I'd say? 98.9%. Well, those, those, that yeah, watch. Those who watch and stay and comment. Watch. Yeah, and but we do pretty well, and we so appreciate it. It's such a supportive community. We do. We love everyone's support. Love the comments. Please share your stories. Don't feel like yeah. you can't share your story. If you have a story that you feel compelled to share from doing this painting please share it we've got facebook we've got instagram we've got twitter you know um we are everywhere everywhere i'm not really on tumblr <laughs> i don't tumble but you know we have the web page we've got a lot of places that you can share stories and share with each other you know in the comments it's so helpful when you guys comment. You don't even oh, know. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a light baby blue for the wings here. When you guys comment, it tells YouTube that uh, you like what we're doing. And so then they show it to more people who they think might like what we're doing. So that's kind of how that works. Comment, like, and subscribe. Yep. Yeah. Comment, like, and subscribe. Share. Yeah. YouTube is also a big fan of the sharing. Also, it just helps get the word out there. So I've got a baby blue happening here. You know. 
And please let the other creators know if you're out there doing the art festival, how much you appreciate them doing. This is a very brave thing for them to do. There isn't a big video art festival, certainly not for breast cancer awareness. No. E everybody took a leap not doing Halloween. Right. Well, and also because we're a global community, so not everybody in our group celebrates Halloween. But everybody took a real leap doing this, and I, I so appreciated their courage and the love mm -hmm. that they were showing for their viewing community just to share this. Is is really amazing. Um, I'll pull the camera background over there too. So okay. Make sure you get that wingy. There we go. So you know, comment everywhere. Really let them know. Great job. Yeah. That you appreciate this kind of curated, thought out community art content, and that you enjoy it. And you know, because it's it's you know, John and I we're uploading all the time, anyways. But it's still a lot, and for some people, it's really a lot, a lot to get a hashtag out oh, yeah. and try to make something for you guys. And they're really, um, they're just trying to reach out. So. This is this is much as much of a of a labor of love for us. Yeah. You know. Well, it is a labor of love. It is exactly. <laughs> <one. laughs> for a sure. One. It is one. <laughs> it is a labor of love. <laughs> <laughs> bump your camera over there again. Bump my camera. See how nice it is to have John in the studio even when we're not live. <laughs> but we're going to do a live event real soon. We are. We're going to we'll be having another live event going up here probably, probably in the next few days even. Yeah, I hope so. Well, this will be up after what those will be up. It's true. People will hear it. They'll be like, when Wait, are you the live events? And then we'll be putting up live events and then you're going to get this and then in here we'll be telling you, don't worry, there's live events coming soon. It's, it, it, it won't matter. This it's the Time Lord effect of YouTube because we're sort of time travelers on YouTube. <laughs> Depending but, on scheduled uploads. You know, you learn to get real trekky with it. You call it, you know, Q effect. The Q effect, really? Are we getting trekky with it? Do we need to? We do need to. Look, they're colored in. Oh, <laughs> so good. So Rinse out brush. So what's next on the sheet? Well, I'm feeling like I've got to decide between yellow and blue eyes. Hmm. Blue? I'm thinking because I was not fully in love with the yellow in the design. Yeah. So you could do yellow. Could do yellow. But I, I kind of am thinking that I need baby blues on Melanie. I did yellow in the design. Ooh, I like those eyes. But I feel like I want her to have blue eyes now. But you could have any eyes you wanted. You could have green eyes. Green eyes. You could paint these owls to represent people in your life based like on eye color mm -hmm. and just the little things that you put on them. You know, because you can customize these up a lot. Oh yeah, you can change the pattern color. A lot. Yeah. And the nice thing with a traceable is that you could just go in there and just uh, put some markers, color in, get an idea what you might want to have in your color palette. Experiment and I, with it. Even though I, I, now at the beginning of my skull, mm -hmm. there's some instructions on how to do a traceable, but we don't have a traceable tutorial up yet. Not yet. On how to trace, but if, if, if we don't have one up and you're needing one, aren't you lucky that you're on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Where you can look up literally anything. It's all here. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> all the information in the universe be here. As of right now, it is the second largest search engine in the world after Google. Honestly, I use it more. Yeah. But it, you know, we say that now. By the time this airs, it could be, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, because this will be up on the 15th at 8 a.m. 15th at 8 a.m. My time zone, which is central. 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 We don't really do time zones in the creative arts collaboration. And um, you know, hey, like I'm so I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud of the creative arts collaboration. I really am. I feel like everybody there is just really putting heart and love into what they do, 
and helping each other out. It has to be the most helpful group about being an artist on YouTube yeah. in the universe. Seriously. Because, like, a huge amount of being an artist on YouTube is panic attacks. Jo is it not, John? There are a lot of panic attacks. There's a lot of panic attacks to making content for YouTube. You guys on the other side of the screen, you have no idea. How many weird things happen to you from the process of trying to film something, edit something, and upload it, and then deal with it once it's in the world? A lot of stuff happens to you and it's crazy stuff it's not like stuff you could ever predictably prepare for so the nice thing about the group that I like is that um, hey we help each other out like so if you've got some panic attack about you've gotten a notice that's really scary mm -hmm. you post it up in the creative arts collaboration and five people who have been through that notice six times go oh no it's just this you just do this and this and then it's all better and well, he didn't do a bag. It's okay. I ha the calming effect of being able to talk to other YouTubers is extraordinary. Oh, yeah. For sure. All the way back to the first when Secret first started talking to me or Clive first started talking to me. And now, you know, like, just the other day, right? Lindsay totally helped me out. That's the frugal crafter I'm name dropping. <laughs> what are you looking for? I'm, I'm looking at them. Oh. You were looking around on the floor like you were looking for something. Oh, I was thinking that um, what I was doing next, and I was thinking that I need black paint, and I was like, where did I put my black paint? Oh. Now, of course, my soft body paint is golden. Which I use, too. I like I, <laughs> I like the golden soft body paint. <laughs> it's the famous car. It's golden. It has a high pigment level and an archival nature that is rivaled by none. Good coverage. Good coverage. Especially on dashboard parts. You could also use the 89 cent of craft paint. Doesn't cover as good. Doesn't? No, it's not as... It's not golden. But it's also 89 cents and this is just uh, I don't know, an amount of money I'm not going to tell you. Multiples higher. Huh? Multiples higher. <laughs> it is multiples higher. But, you know. So you can kind of see that that's a different viscosity. I'm using a second return mm -hmm. there, babe. A viscosity. It is. I had to water it down to get it to, to flow a little more. Did you? Yep. Well, there you go. So you do have to water it down to get a little more flow. John is correct. And I'll pull it out. You know what you could grab for me, sweetheart? What's that? What is it that I always leave that I need? It's my art towel. Oh, yeah. Paper towels, anything like that. Because I'm, I'm squeegeeing out the... Um... On the ground next to you. Goodbye. I cannot believe we have people that watch these entire videos. You have to adjust the camera up. I'm going to adjust the camera up right now. Good. Thank you, John. It is so much better with you here because, like, before I'd have been like, oh, I forgot to adjust the camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now they just blame it on me. John forgot to remind you to adjust the camera. I like that better, though. I like that better. You know, I really like working with you. Here. I can't imagine why. Not that this is really working, because working would imply we, <laughs> some true. kind of payroll at the end of all this. What we do is we make videos and put them online. I enjoy our YouTube uh, video experience together. <laughs> that we, I am full time. Y yes. I am full time YouTube. I'm YouTube all the time. You're loving it, though. I love it. I love the YouTube community. Yes. I mean, like, you don't really understand it until they show up. Yeah. It's like, dude, our Car tribe showed up. Our tribe showed up. That is exactly how it feels. Our family, our hardest family, came and painted with us. It's pretty amazing, powerful stuff. Oh, painting that. Those are dark eyes. Well, the barn owls have super dark eyes. And I'm painting a teeny tiny bright here. It's a teeny tiny bright, isn't it? Yeah, so I'm painting a very small bright, and I like brights because they give me a sharp edge. I could also paint a detail. And what's the difference between a detail and a bright? So a detail is a round pointed brush and a bright is a square brush with a sharp edge. Sharp, not like any cut paper, but just sharp. It gives you crisp lines. Interesting. Interesting. I see. 
as we say this for the next 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Which brush is it you're using? Is it a fill brush? I don't know what one looks like. You have to adjust the camera there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> What's the difference between a bright and a detail brush? You know what's terrible is that uh, my mom still explains stuff like this to me, and she's not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. Just in case I forgot. Because you know that might have happened. I, now, I don't think my um, glue is dry, so I'm going to just dry it real quick with the hair dryer. Oh, no. This uh, means is... we have to fast forward here. Cool. That's incredibly loud. Is it? Yeah. Well, they, well, well we were going to fast, fast forward, forward through, right? That's the only thing we fast forward through is the time for air drying. Because you guys have expressed that you really like to have full lessons. We do omit the parts where we have to go out and refill cups and yeah. things like that. But... Yeah. Stop the dogs. dog from yeah. eating anyone outside the house. <laughs> She's got, you know, she's got a thing going with the squirrels. She's really feeling. Occasionally we have unscheduled mom attendance. Unscheduled mom attendance, squirrel maintenance. The squirrels are really, you know what? The squirrel went after me. What? Yeah. I was out photographing and painting on the fence. And the same squirrel that keeps tormenting my dog, Greta, comes scurrying along the fence and like hopped up and like at me. I didn't see that. That is alarming. I'm like, it's zoo! <laughs> I came running in the house. <laughs> I did though. That's great. <laughs> so like it's Zoo. It's happening. I should have never mocked that show. I have to say those squirrels, I mean they're I mean, there's some tough squirrels out there. So we have some we have some wild or some you know half house cats here that, you know, try to get them. Yeah, I wouldn't even take cats. on one of these squirrels. Yeah. Our squirrels are like our squirrels are like, I don't know, street squirrels? <laughs> I don't know how to put it. They're like the Klingons of the squirrel world. Texas tree squirrels. Texas tree squirrels. Like everything else in Texas, just on another level. Just a, you know. Squirrels there that don't mess with Texas. They, they have their own little squirrel sign all made in nuts or something. <laughs> just intense. And I was like thinking like right up into the great squirrel fence attack, which I haven't been outside to photograph another painting so that's how much it impacted me <laughs> yeah i was thinking you know how they have those like squirrel contraptions you mostly see this like overseas in the uk oh yeah where it's like a little obstacle course where they do stuff with their squirrels that must be a european squirrel because yep, i is. yeah i think if i started feeding these guys they would just take the house well you know what we, we could do a, a a male version of this painting with some squirrels you know, just check your nuts I like that. Check your nuts. That's really cool. We shall do that. Our, like, for some reason, apparently it's a secret dream for you and I to do public service announcements. <laughs> With paintings, <laughs> With and, paintings. and animals. <laughs> we will improve the world through art. And YouTube videos. Not of cats, but instead of other strange animals you're going to paint. Let's see. It's just, it's just good. And you know what? Here's the thing, though. This is, I think that these things, that, these things make a difference. Smokey the bear totally convinced me that only I could prevent forest fires. Have you seen the new Smokey commercials? No. They're awesome. <laughs> Have they gone off? Or are they? When are they coming back? They've they made new Smokey commercials. Then there was, do you remember the trash ones, like don't litter one, which you couldn't do now because it's so politically incorrect oh, and yeah. offensive. It's like on another level. Yeah, I yeah, know. There were, there, were there were some rough ones back then. Yeah. The crying Native American. Yes. In really inappropriate and probably historically inaccurate dress. Yes. That, by the way, I totally believe was real. And I was like, when you see crying in the trash, I'm like, I will never throw out anything again. I am so sorry. I didn't realize I was like messing up your backyard. Things you don't know. So it was a terrible thing, but honestly, it had a good impact on me. And then it made me, you know, think about my trash. This is this is a, a long and windy road, this this um, painting we're taking. Is it taking too long? No, no, no. We're just, I mean, you know, we went, we're, we're it's a, 
Oh, like yeah. just emotionally. I, I think that our our stream of consciousness here definitely, you know, is is uh, going some places. Yep. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna change out my water because my water's getting a little filthy. Um, and you can do that. You don't have to be, my son is like mental about it. Like he gets his water tinted at all. We got to change his water. He's very exhausting to paint with. <laughs> He's like, I put paint in it. Let's change it. I'm going to outline we'll zoom up on it. my heart in my dark purple. A lot of these are, these kind of graphic pieces are really easy and they just take a little bit of work and effort. That's all it is. They just take a little bit of work and effort. So you're just using your bright and outlining it? I'm just using my bright and outlining. You know what else you could use? A detail? A detail! How about a one inch filbert? That would be really challenging. And also not look as pretty, but might be painterly. That's what we've got to do more of is like, it's a feature, I meant it. You have a three foot detail on the wall. I do have a three foot detail on the wall. It's, it, it's yeah, it is actually a three foot detail. That's crazy. You know what I'd like to make? I just saw this thing. I'd like to make an adult coloring page, one of the giant mural canvas ones. Oh, yeah. That's like a new thing. That'd be a cool heart party thing to have. We should do one of those. Maybe. Check that out. So, did you know some of the artists in this collaboration are auctioning off or selling their artwork and all the proceeds are going to various uh, cancer research or can uh, post care or different charities? that they are fond of. That's pretty fantastic. I think that's pretty cool. You know, we are, you know. I, We're just I, asking you to grow up yourself. Yes. yes. Just fill yourself up. No. I card. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if somebody's going to be like really offended like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> just enough of that there. Right. Well. Y'all are not as funny as you think. That's all right. Is that how you're saying I have to edit? Giant Donna cup of coffee. Donna gave this to me. Did I say this at the beginning? This is a Donna cup. I'll annotate. This is a Donna cup. Donna came to VidCon and gave me the biggest cup of coffee in the world. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's the biggest one. The biggest one. So I've got all this in, and guess what I get to start doing? What's that? I need to paint in the white. Ooh. Ooh. And I'm going to find another bright. I'm going to get a nice little half-inch bright. And for the purposes of this, because I haven't managed my white paint very well, I'm going to put out a little more white. And I'm going to get on a dry brush. See, I didn't even put it in the water. And I'm going to dry brush the white over this yellow and what that's going to do is that's going to let a lot of the paint underneath shine through and make the white actually seem whiter mm. it's a weird thing it does if you paint a darker color underneath your white sometimes it makes a, the white seem more real or brighter or really pop more better contrast you get more contrast. And because purple and yellow are actually contrasting colors, that are also, that's some color theory there we're messing with. Mm. For creating, I might have to come back and put in my purple outline. I'm being a little uncautious. And the reason I am is because acrylic painting is incredibly forgiving. If this were watercolor, I'd be freaking out right now. <laughs> This is acrylic, and acrylic allows me a lot of creativity and leeway. I really hope everybody's liking this. I hope they're going to comment and tell us their stories. You know, be nice to each other when you're sharing your stories.
but definitely come by the Facebook page, come by Instagram, come by Twitter, share your paintings. If anybody actually does do a mammogram <laughs> party, followed by, um, you know, a girls' night or something with this, please let us know. We'd love to see that. Mm -hmm. That would be really amazing. Because the whole goal of this, it's, you know, the whole goal of this is to help people. Yeah. And post pictures up of, of all your paintings. Yes. We love to see the artwork. We love to see the artwork. I'm, you know, like, even on my Facebook page, we've all, we are getting a lot of amazing shares. I'm trying to get in there and make sure that, you know, even on my non-comment days, that I'm at least liking. There's a joke in there where we, you know. I'm messing with you, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got that and that, all right? Now the next thing that we can do is we can embed it. So I've got some different glitter. You can use whatever glitters you like. I've got a variety of pink glitters. I'm gonna rinse this, rinse, 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 rinse this out. And I'm gonna pull this pink glitter and I'm gonna glitter these wings right here. You can put your camera in there a little closer. And yeah, I can. So you can see the glitter. I think the glitter matters. I think glitter matters. I think a lot of people think that glitter is matter. Glitter is an important part of dealing with anything. I think whenever I'm stressed out or thinking about something, I, I really, you know, I just, a little glitter makes the day a bit better. Sparkles it up. And we've talked a lot about wanting to have the glitter bar in the studio. Yep. And do some more embellishing and glittering. Which isn't really a fine art thing, but it's a fun art thing. See, that's got some, I don't know if you guys can, can, any, can we see the sparkle? Yeah, we can see the sparkle in there. It's really a lot of sparkle in my, f oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can see it in front of the camera. There you go. Oh, wonderful. So you can see the sparkle. That sparkle matters, I think. Right? Yep, sparkles matter. Sparkles matter. It's like a public service announcement, I think. That sparkles matter? Yeah. There can never be enough sparkle. Now I'm gonna do my, um, this, this darker pink right here, it has sparkle in it, and I'm gonna paint it over my first color. You can get pull that over there. A pink and white. Shoo! All right, these are just little tattoos. I hope I'm moving forward quickly enough. I feel yeah. like this lesson might be going too long. No, no, you're doing great. I don't know at the plus an hour range, though, what that even matters anymore. So I'm just adding this glitter to this and causing this to pop. Right? Adding this glitter. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but I just like a little glitter. Nothing wrong with your wrist. No. And I'm even, I'm going to take a wrist, John. What's your wrist? I'm going to maybe add some glitter glitter. Ooh. How do you do that? Well, theoretically, I sprinkle it on the wet paint. Oh, just like. And it only sticks to the wet paint. But I'm a little nervous now. Hmm. I don't know if I should be brave. Well, I mean, we can edit it out if it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the work, like I tell you right now, the work of letting glitter out of your painting, it's a whole nother level of work. Well, so. What I would say is we, we throw some hair dryer on there so we make sure that the area that you want. But uh, where I'm painting it is right oh, there. Well, then I guess then you're just in. I'm in. And then I just make sure that it's sort of wet. And the trick is I'm going to hold it flat. Yep. Right? And I'm going to open up my glitter. I'm going to use my fingers. 
going a little glitter. You could do a lot of glitter. Glitter. So glitter is great flat. What's very nice is everywhere it's dry where I just blew, mm -hmm. blew some off. But everywhere it thinks it's maybe wet, it's still sticking, which is kind of annoying. So see, she's just a little sparkly, or maybe freckly. <laughs> oh no! I just feel Melanie needed some bling. She got some bling. Some she got some bling. bling. She also needs some um, little feathies. Some feathies. Some feathies. So I'm gonna get some white and some of my pink again. And are we close up on her? I'm gonna add just a little bit of feathies coming off. more white than pink so that they they can kind of show and make sure we got some over here she's that type of owl she'd have these little feathers coming off and come back with just the pink just add a little bit that's a thing that bugs you know that's important to me does not necessarily have to be important to anyone else it's just something that mattered to me yeah, and I'm going to take my pink that's right here with a little bit of my cad red, that cad red and white pink. And I'm going to make, and I'm going to get this down here so you can see it, I'm going to make the uh, um, little <coughs> ribbon. And so what's interesting is I'm going to come and arc up, loop around, and come down. So it's almost like at eight. Almost. It's almost like an eight. So if you've ever done an eight, probably you can get a ribbon in really easily. I'm using a small, sharp, bright. You could use a small detail. And I'm thickening the ends so they feel a little bit like a ribbon. And I'm going to come in with a highlight later. Right? I'm going to come up here on Mildred and I'm going to give her another ribbon. So I start, interestingly enough, at the bottom, come up, figure eight around, and come down. Do you need a camera up on that? Yeah, come up on that. Thank you. Catch it. I'll do, I have to do it again anyway. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it, with your hand in that angle, it's easier for us to actually look at it after you've done it yeah, so there you go so now they both have their ribbons <coughs> their ribbons right which is lovely and i'm going to get just a little of the blue and white and make a very light light blue And I want to add just a very dry brush where I add a lighter blue in this eye. I'm just adding another dimension. I wouldn't bug you guys. Add time to the project if it didn't make a big result for your finish. Finish. That extra little light blue around the eye makes a difference. Big difference. Just so pretty. Right? Just so pretty. Now, no, a fluid white paint. You could take your white and make it more fluid by adding water to it. Or you can purchase a fluid white paint. But what you're trying to get, I'm looking for these brushes. I know I put in here. Here's a good, this is a very sharp, detailed, detailed brush. Tiny, tiny. It's been so abused, all the 
paint and everything's come off of it. And I'm going to get just paint loaded up on my brush. I'm going to come and show you the, uh, actually I'm going to, I think it might be easier thinking about it. I did it that way the first time, but I think for you guys it might be easier if I show you guys just doing the yellow. So we're going to put a little yellow by our fluid paint. If you put out your daisies dots before you put out your white, it may help you plan your way around the belly better. So I'm going to put a little dot here, a little dot here towards the bottom, come up here and add a little dot. Maybe a little dot there. Definitely need a little dot in the center of my flower here. And while we're at it, this could probably use a little dot. Put one here. We're just trying to make sure that Mildred is embellished with her flowers. Little dots. Little one here. Now we've got some gold glitter we can come in with later and embellish that. So let's just get our white paint. Let's make little petals going out of our daisies, which is the white paint. Not the soft body white paint, just the white paint. And it's just little brush strokes going out. And you know what's nice is if you grab a little yellow in the stroke, it'll come out into the petal and it'll be really good. Just making a little daisy. Just a little flower. Just something fun and decorative. And again, you can thin your white paint to be like a fluid paint. I'm just doing these little brush strokes out. But it can be troubling and challenging. So for the 89 cents in this particular case, if you can grab the two the bottles of fluid white. Just adding around makes it easier. Oops, cut the yellow. Adding around makes it easier for some parts of the project. You know, we're not trying to make archival paint. We're not trying to get into the art gallery. We're trying to make art that is relevant to our lives, our current lives, not the lives of people in 500 years. Right. Not that we don't care about them, we do. <laughs> but right now, this art is about us, the things that we're going through, the stuff that we care about. Just making these little flowers. They're just telling a little flower story. You're familiar with this, right? Yeah. Just a little flower story. These are not perfect little little daisies. How are you doing, John? Doing pretty good. How are you doing? Woo! It's a marathon. Yeah. Worried about time a little bit. No, you're doing just fine. You're only a week behind a couple of things. Yes. You know, various dog barking and other yes. shenanigans. I'm here with my daisies up here on her head. Now I might get a little of this white and blue. Because I want Melanie's daisy to be... A soft blue. So I'm going to come just paint a happy little daisy. You can be as careful with this as makes your heart happy, by the way. Oh, yeah. You can paint very careful daisies. You can paint very loose daisies. Either one will work, either one will get you the result that you're looking for. Now, rinse, 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 rinse. 
back to the soft body white load it on my brush and i guess i gotta go down here john forgot to tell me well i didn't know where you were going yet going down here that's all blend joint and we're gonna make little curly cues and so this is a very fluid flow paint and when i use a detail brush and this paint it allows me to do very thin delicate lines this technique is really really about the tools much more than about the person doing it. Now, it doesn't have to be the most expensive tools on the planet. You just want a good detail brush. And a good fluid paint, but they don't have to be like golden. A craft paint will do it. A Simply Simmons detail brush will do it. Honestly, you could probably do a paint pen. And get a pretty good result. Mm -hmm. I can see that. You know, this is just about creating this pattern. She's elaborate. She's fancy. Yeah. She's fancy. She is who she is, and she's not going to let anything change that. You know, I mean, she's just gotten to that place in life where she understands who she is mm -hmm. and who she wants to be, and she's happy with it. I have a lot of background story on these owls today, John. <laughs> <laughs> but we're world building when we're painting. Oh, well, yeah, true. As much as, like, you know, R.R. Martin is, and I just choose not to kill everybody in my world. True. That's all I'm saying. I'm just trying not to kill everybody in my world. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get just, just loaded on the brush. It's just loaded on the brush. And I might normally do this flat, but for the purposes of teaching it, I'm going to do it like this. We're going to make dots. And I'm going to go quickly. You go slowly. I'm going to make dots all over my wings. You could also use a squeeze pen. Squeeze paint too. Alright. But I like this embellishment. I like this as a pattern on the wings. Now I could make deep, neat, orderly dots. I did that the first time. And I find that I'm liking kind of random dots. Which is what I'm enjoying. Yeah. I'm moving it. So you can just sort of see these little dots coming in. So we got the glitter and then we've got some dots. You could also do rhinestone. Do um, half inch pearls. I mean the little half, half sided pearls where the pearls are flat on one side. You could glue a bunch oh, yeah. of pearls. How you embellish your story is up to you. What I just want to convey to you is that you can paint your life. That the creativity is inside of you. You know, that you deserve good things. We're all worthy of health and happiness. There isn't somebody out there that doesn't deserve those basic Absolutely. things. I mean, you could go bananas to get it. It's not nice to kill all your neighbors to get your health and well-being. But of course you deserve those things. You know, just get the dots going. Okay. So a little dotage. A little dotage. You look really good. You're looking really good. Next thing we're going to do, you 
you know, they've got these squeeze tubes of paint. I just happen to have this pink glow in the dark paint. Mm. Um, you could use, I've seen them in glitter. So it's really just anything, right? And I'm going to, oh, yeah, make dots. around the eyes using this. This is another tool that you have to make dots. You could do it with the tip of your brush. You could do it with squeeze paint. You could just do it with a pink paint on a, on a detail brush and dot around. Lots of options. If I use this glow in the dark option, guess what happens? What's that? Melanie here glows in the dark. Which is maybe, now that I'm thinking of it, not a good thing. Could be cool. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> we're doing it now. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So I'm just, I don't know if you guys can really see this. I just squeeze out a little bit. This is a lot like <clears throat> frosting, if you can frost a cake. Similar thing, right, guys? Similar thing, frost a cake. That's what we're doing here. Looking, pretty, looking very cute, little dots. Looking cute. Little owls. Hopefully people will feel like they can fast forward through whatever they don't want to deal with. Alright, so we got these cute little dots. It seems like it's the same pink as around the rest of the owl, but these things are important. I'm going to do that in the wings now. But first, I'm going to outline the wing with this pink paint. I'm going to pull down. Now, you could do that with a detail brush, like just like I did the soft buddy white paint. And then just put your dots inside the wing here. That's cool. There's your nice little polka dot. Yeah. Could have also just hand paint polka dots. Or like the dimensionality. Of these dots. I'm just trying, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm, I felt like this painting needed to have some fun stuff to it. Well, you, you, you could use anything. Yes. Kind of like puff paint. Puff paint. For that. sure would work here. If it says fabric paint, guys, guess what? Canvas is fabric. That's true. And you're not going to wash it. <laughs> yeah, so it's probably going to be pretty solid. Yep. For, for the purposes of why you're painting, yes. Very solid. Look at that wing. I'm going to come around and outline. Do I need to move this over? I think I... No, it's good. I'm going to outline this other wing. Put a little over hair dryer. Once your paint is dry, if you make a mistake with paint, you can remove it with a wet towel. Not like a sopping wet towel. But with a damp towel. Or even a brush. And I'm going to dot this wing, too. In this particular owl, she would glow in the dark and also under black light, which you could do this whole painting in neon colors under black light if you followed us and did our glow paint series. Which would be crazy. Which oh. we need to do a new glow paint painting soon. We do. So many paintings to do. So many paintings to do and ask for, you know, and we can ask for a lot of paintings and we love it and wish it. You know, sometimes you guys send us wishes. Well, as you notice, we're always respectful of people's names. But we put them on the canvas. Mm -hmm. And we want you guys to put your own wishes on your canvas. You've got to feel worthy of your dreams. It's tough to do anything in life if you don't feel worthy of the dream that you have. Yeah. I'm going to do dots along here now. To define the space between the pink and yellow. 
thinking you might do this flat. I'm doing this upright. Just so the camera can see it a little easier. So the camera can see it. You do your glitter flat. You take your time. I'm going to outline this wing here. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that would be really nice. It's just a dimensionality. Just a definition. Plus it's just fun. It's fun to have these little these little defining moments. Yeah. I mean you can always like dry this with the hair dryer. Just know sometimes when you dry things. I'm gonna outline the bottom of the belly. Can we see that? No. I'm gonna outline her bottom of the belly. Right now I'm just thinking like places I can outline and define these spaces using this paint. That adds some more uh, texture what? there, visual texture to it. It creates a little visual texture, it creates a line. This is this is supposed to be a happy bean. This is supposed to be a fun art painting. So you could do this with a detail brush and any of your paints, guys. I'm just using the squeeze tube here because it's a good tool that you can easily and inexpensively get. I don't mind encouraging you guys to get tools that you can inexpensively get. So you got a little smudge there. Guess what I can do? I'm going to come along here. You're going to zoom in on that? Yeah, I'm going to show you how I fix it. So I made a little smudgy smudge that I didn't like. See that there? I'm going to come in with a dry, crisp brush. Not fixed. Wipe it off. It's acrylic paint. I don't have to get freaked out about anything that's going on here. Right. Now I think I'm going to, I'm going to flip this painting just to mess with everybody, but also to make things easier for my hands to get to. Mm -hmm. And actually, because I've got so much detail work to do in her eyes, hmm, I'm going to wait. Uh, I'm going to do her belly though. I'm going to wait to do the rest of the puff paint until her eyes are in. Because I need a place to rest my hand. So I'm having to make a crafting decision here about my comfort and how I paint. Yeah. So I'm nearly done. Oh, yeah. These adorable adorables, I mean, are nearly done. I'm going to show you guys uh, some tricks on the lettering. But nearly, nearly done. I'm going to get one of my detailed brights that I'm such a fan of. And I'm going to get some white and purple. And make a very, 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 very light lavender. I'm going to avoid my paint that I've already got in. Dry it if you need to. Especially zoom up where you can. Shoop. And I'm going to do her makeup. And think of it as makeup. So when you're doing makeup on your eyes, you have a, you're going to put a lighter color right there. I'm going to do that too. I'm going to, I'm going to create a lighter color on the inside. Of her eyes. And I'm going to take a little of my blue and let's go to my purple and make it kind of almost a periwinkle going and add a little white to that. And I'm going to blend a little bit like makeup guys everywhere going like, what is happening? And blend that darker color out. You never know. There may be a whole bunch of guys who are in Kiss tribute bands who know exactly what you're talking about. I, for all the Kiss tribute guys painting with me, oh my goodness, please write it. I haven't ever heard from a basketball player or anybody. <laughs> all the people I'm like, let me know. Biker artists, let me know. <laughs> you never know. So come here underneath. Put her under makeup right there. And then we're going to very lightly... This was just us. This right here, what I'm doing here, is about the lightness of the pressure. I am lightening up this pressure. Okay? So, like, when I'm painting in her eye here, I've got fairly firm pressure. And where I come down, where I'm trying to create this sort of, like, dusted color, I'm very, like, almost kissing the canvas with the brush. And this is probably the most demanding part of the whole painting. I'm going to get a little more blue on my, I haven't rinsed out, but I'm going to grab a little more blue 
And I'm going to put out more white again because I'm going through my white and all I have is off white, which is not what I want. <laughs> not what I want. Put a little scotch of white. And I'm going to get just a tint of that. I'm going to come under the eye. Very light pressure again with that tint. little blue, little white, just a tint. Just a tint. We're just tinting under here. I'm just kind of talking about some maybe darker feathers that are around the eye, right? Let me get just a little more white on there. So it's very, very light. It's very, very light. worth doing I think so I hope so I hope it's worth doing I always worry about how you guys paintings will come out these techniques will come together for you you know or if they'll be challenging I always worry she looks really good she looks pretty good right now I'm gonna define that purple right there there's a little spot where I'm just feeling like the purple isn't really defined along her under eye so I just fix it right and I'm going to do a very interesting thing. I'm going to get my detail brush out. I'm going to get my fluid bodied black. Where you can mix a very fluid black paint. This is up on my eyes. And I'm going to make sure that I come up here and create some eyelashes. Eyelashes, guys, can be really troubling for y'all. So what I'm doing is I press hard at the beginning of the stroke and incredibly light at the end of the stroke, and that's what gives me my tapered finish. Oh. And I'm curving these out here. It can be one of those areas where you find frustration. So why do I include them? <laughs> do they look really good? Because they look really good, and in the end, you guys are going to want to do them. I, I, in the beginning of my teaching, I would try to like take stuff out like eyelashes, and then everybody was just trying to put them in anyways. I guess once you learn this, the technique, it's not terribly hard. Once you get a sense of what this is about, it's about a thicker stroke at the beginning and a lighter stroke at the end. And about the curve of the strokes, they're curving this way. So like on an eyelash, I'll do it on the palette here, they curve up or they curve down. Nice. They have that little curve and that's how they look. Then I'm going to rinse my little brush out. And I'm going to get a little of my uh, kind of periwinkle color I mixed out here and get it into my fluid body white. So I get a very light version of it. And I've already mixed it. I'm going to get a very, very light version of it. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to line the upper part of the lid and create a highlight on her lashes. Wow, that looks really cool. And that's what pops them. It really does. Honestly, if you guys will forgive yourselves some imperfect lashes and just do the highlight, it'll look how you want it to look. Try not to get stuck on the lashes. I really wish I could be in your little painting place and going, no, no, don't worry about it. Just let it go. <laughs> just a little highlight. Because I'm not doing this perfectly. It doesn't really have to be perfect. That's not what this has to be at all. It just has to tell the story. Now, I'm going to wipe my little brush off here. And I'm going to grab a little of my fluid white paint. And I'm going to make, can you see this? Well, okay, yes. A squiggle that's a little squiggle at the top. And then becomes a little tiny light line there. And that says, that's a reflection on the beak. Woo! Cool. And then... On the inside of the eye here, I'm going to make a little reflection and a little minor reflection. And I'm going to come, whoops, see I almost rested on my paint there, I don't have to fix that. Come out here and make a dot reflection. And you may need to, to dry your paint to keep going, and that's okay. I've got to kind of hop along, but you guys might need to dry your paint. 
and then a little minor reflection. And that's how you get your burnout eyes in. Now, your other little owl, she wants a reflection too, so very carefully, so I'm gonna bring it down here. Melanie, she needs reflective eyes, but well, she's not as cute as she is, could be. And she's adorable, so let's give her a reflection. And a little minor reflection. This is big time kawaii stuff here. A little minor reflection. And another little minor reflection. So now our friends are, you know, they're doing what they're doing. Right? Mm -hmm. Here we go. I'm going to put out just a little more neon pink paint with my glitter. You could put out your bright pink, whatever your flamingo color is that you hooked yourself up with. I want you just to load it up on your brush and add a little bit of it to your ribbon. Let's see if I can get down there and do that. I'm adding a little bit of it to my ribbon just to pop my ribbon a little bit. Now I'm going to come over to Mildred's ribbon mm -hmm. and I'm going to pop it a little bit. Mixing up these pinks is the trick. In this sense, the way the CAD is a different pink actually helps us out quite a bit. Yeah. Now I've got to outline the rest of this up here, but first something cool that I can do. I want this to be blingy. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to glue rhinestones, so I found this... Uh, Create Createology, Createology glitter glue. I'm gonna hold the squeezy thing back with my finger. Where are you gonna put that on? I'm gonna put that in the center of these flowers, and when it dries, it's gonna give me like I almost embellished it with a gemstone. The glue in it is will dry clear, and it'll almost self level. Uh -huh. Right? It will almost self level. It seems like a silly touch. It, it's fun for the kids. This, you know, if you're doing this project with the kid, I think it looks really nice. This is like part of the thing. And this is the trick. See, I'm holding it. I, I hold this thing back. This oh, is so what gets everybody. Good. And I'm going to come in and we're going to put some right here on Mel Melody. Down here. Okay, so she's got a little glitter. And then we're going to finish blinging out Mildred because Mildred didn't come to the show because he showed up. Yep. So I'm going to come back up to her head. And we're just going to finish her out. I'm going to create a little line here. Create a little line there. This will be fun at night because she's going to glow. Mm hmm. You know, and you can also make the ribbons glow. You could trace the outside of the ribbons and make them glow as well. Okay, I feel like that got a little messy with me there. I'm going to use my brush to sort of clean that up. Edge that a bit. And that's just all it takes to fix that. But around her face, what I really want to do is do dots in the dark purple of her barn owl heart. Hopefully you guys are seeing it. I like the dots. I very much like the dots. Yeah, I like those too. All right, there we go. There's our owls. Now you could just be done. If you didn't want to say save the Hooters, 
if you just wanted to have these be pink owls, you're good, you're good, you're going to go home. I'll see you at these really soon. Um, but if you'd like to write the words in, if you, want. if you wanted to write the words in, I'm going to, I'm going to do that with you. What? I want to see it. You want to see it? Okay. You're like, hello, I'm here. <laughs> Co-host totally would like to. <laughs> so I'm going to letter up here. I'm not a genius at lettering. Lettering is not like my, my calling. I'm going to use a bright, a nice crisp bright, and I'm going to use my fluid black paint. You could use a stencil, you could use a stamp, and now we could get really fancy lettering. And I'm going to, I thought I brought my yellow tape back here just for this. Oh, there's my yellow tape. So now we can curve the words over, or you can use tape. I just want to show you really quick to give yourself straight guiding lines. And then you just, you won't think of this, but if you think of it from, you know, grade school. Now, you know that the top of your letter should be here and here and they'll be more uniform. Right. So if you want to do a curve, you would write a curve. If you want it to be in straight spaces, this is how you would do that. So I'll show you one straight line. I'm going to move this down a little bit sure. more into my comfort space for my lettering. Now I've seen really great uh, tutorials on lettering. Mm -hmm. I wholly recommend watching them. <laughs> but this is what I do. I'm not great at lettering. not my skill set. Here's what I know about lettering. If you draw an A this right way somewhere, you have to draw that A everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's what I remember from lettering. And it's just not my favorite class. But I just try to be artful with my lettering and hopefully people forgive me yeah. what I got going yeah. on. You do? Yep. I think that's because you love me. You're really good. Like, I don't think any sign companies are going to be beating down my door going, you, you're who we've missed our whole life. So see, then I can pull that and it, and because this is very special tape, this is artist tape, right? This is artist tape. And because I have this, and then I can touch up where I had this little bobble here. It will never pull up my paint. This is not the same thing as the blue paint at Home Depot. Yeah. And because I'm doing black, I actually won't reuse the tape, even though it's nice and conservative fiscally. We can, we can do that. We're gonna. It, it's more likely to give you some boo boos. I'm actually gonna lower this word, so I don't want them to be on the same lines. And I'm going to say, I'd like this one to be smaller in font size. So that's how I size my fonts. <laughs> it's just my crazy way of doing it. I'm not saying it is the right way by any means. Everybody's got a lot of good ways. Zoom in there. Frankly, I think probably the journalers and the crafters have got this locked down. You want to zoom in on that? Yeah, I do. So see, I made the space between the tape smaller. So that's how I know my, my font size. And I'm going to do this in lowercase. Because I like to be completely random. Right? Ah! It's like I had a plan. And you totally know I didn't. Now I can make a word go on a curve like this mm -hmm. here. I could do the word nicely and neatly here. I think for artifact, I'm going to get angular. Cool. You know, is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to take advantage of like uh, maybe chalk and give myself a guide. Right? 
me so that I know my word will guide. And if I do that guide, it will give the appearance that my very artful handwritten word has more of a plane than it actually does. Now, oh, there's curved skinny tape I could use to make my boundary here. And if I was doing this like for some professional reason, I totally would. Okay. Did we not catch me arcing it? That's okay. We, we, we saw the arc on the thing. Okay. So I'm going to do the first uppercase. O's give me so much grief, dude. I got no tips on O's here. Um, I know I'm going to, I'm either going to have to make this all uppercase or I'm going to have some lowercase and I think I'm going to have some lowercase. So I know my O will be about the same height as my H bar. And my next O will have to look something like that O. Something like, but clearly not the same. I got two of those. I gotta think about the T I did up here. So I'll do T. Oops. And that got away from me. And I just own it. I don't stop my whole painting. Stamping would have been a good idea. No. Turning out. It, it will work out. By the time it's all embellished, what will happen is it will make sense. Now, I'm going to get fancy with my S here, kids. And we'll get all up in it with my S. Because that makes me happy. And at some point, you get to do the things in your paintings that make you happy. And that makes me happy. So if I'm going to do text on my painting, I want it to be creative. I want it to be crafty. I want it to be interesting. I'm going to hit the hair dryer real quick to make sure all this hot mess is dry. flip this over. I'm going to flip this over so that the part I've got to work is dry and accessible to my hand. And I'm going to come back in, get my detail brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of little white dots along my letters. And I'm going to come the inside of my curve of this S And I'm going to space out evenly little white dots. This will be cool when the pink dots happen. And then I'm going to come over the top here. Of the S. See, so I did the inside there and the top there. I'm not going to put the dots around every part of my lettering. I'm going to come on the outside of the A with some dots. The dots will tie this craftiness all together. It's just, it's weird how that works. It'll just make the craftiness make sense. And then on the inside of the curve here, I'm going to do dots, but not the rest of the A. And then I'm going to come to the outside of the V. Spacing out white dots and the inside of the V. Spacing out white dots. Just the thing we can do almost like uh, light bulbs. And just, interestingly enough, the outside of the E. Now, woo.
outside of the T. Back side of the H, inside of the arc. Again, with lettering, it's about just making up a rhyme or reason and then just following it for absolutely no rhyme or reason. Outside of the E. <laughs> That's like it, the one thing I did take away because I did have a class on lettering. <laughs> it doesn't show. No, it's turning out really nice. But that was the thing <sighs> about it is you could make any random decision that you wanted but then you had to make that random decision not random anymore. Like be consistent. It just they wanted consistency. And then along the top bar. And if your eye or your or you know the brain felt that there was some thought process there, then it would just go, oh, okay, I know what you mean. Of course at my school when we had lettering, we didn't have a computer. <laughs> And not because it was so long ago either. All other art schools had computers. I just, we just did not. So we had to learn how to do this by hand. And that was crazy. But I'm sort of glad for all those harder lessons. Now. So since I did the dots around the E this way. Then all I've got to do is do the dots around the E this way. I'm just repeating my patterns and I'm going to do the outside of the R and now I'm going to repeat exactly what I did on this S on this S even though it's a very different kind of S around the top and then come around the inside bottom dots. So this repeat of pattern makes these two very different S's feel like they go together a little bit more. Guess what I get to do now? We get to go backwards. Get some puffy paint. We get to go back with our puffy paint. Mm. The paint of puff. Shake it down. Is this, get is on your canvas. Huh? Is this your glow in the dark paint? This is my glow in the dark paint that I grabbed. But you could do just any puffy paint. Any puffy paint at all. You're just going back in there with that same pattern. I'm just trying to repeat this pattern, this sort of carnival pattern. Trying to find the happiness. By the way, this kind of weird stuff is like where the health benefits come from. When you're like dotting things, that's where you're actually like lowering your cholesterol and fighting off stress. Sort of same place that Zen tangles are helpful for you. So how I get a smaller dot on my puffy paint? Guess what it is? Squeeze it's pressure. Squeeze. Yeah, but it's pressure. It's always so much of painting is pressure. How much pressure to or not to apply? has nothing to do with some weird born skill of art that you might have and listen wherever you are we're hoping that this painting this project is helping you on the journey that you're on on the experience that we're on we're hoping that it's healing yeah. we're hoping that it helps you feel better you know um, i'm certainly hoping that it inspired a bunch of people to go out and grow themselves and check their cans and knots or you know pollens whatever you need to be checking all the parts all the parts take care of yourselves you know it can't just be everybody else who's valuable that doesn't work because that just breaks the heart of all the people who think you're valuable you have to matter too you're important too not just them Part of the job is taking care of yourself. I like all the little dots. I like all the little dots too. So hopefully this inspires some people to take care of themselves. Or if you're currently going through something, 
hopefully it helped you feel better about it or gave you a relief for some pain or fatigue or illness. If you weren't able to paint, I'm gonna fix this right here with us because you're not feeling well, then you know it's our wish that you feel better really soon. And it's not just our wish, it's everybody's wish that's watching us. Yes. Super important. Because you got to be grounded. And on that note, we got to paint in feet. 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 To be grounded. Can't be grounded if you have no feet. We missed everything but the feet. Well, no, I just, I just do the feet last. So I just do a couple little lines. I do cartoon feet. My feet are ridiculously small for the size of my bird. <laughs> Always have been. That's just my little humor as an artist coming out. You like small feet? Woo! I think we've done it. I think those are some hooters. And hopefully these wishes all come true. Which wouldn't it be great if in while this video still exists on YouTube, if it complete, if like it didn't make any sense anymore. Here's my last wish. I hope that while this video is up on YouTube and you're watching it, you're going, it serves no purpose. It serves no purpose. There's no more breast cancer. Yep. There's no more cancer. Why are we doing this? Can we just paint some owls? I hope all the comments come like, I don't know what you're talking about anymore. Yeah. That would be super awesome. I, I would really wish that. And I just wish. wish happiness and well being to you guys. I hope you're enjoying this video art festival. Make playlists. Find other people. I hope you loved Ian's Save the Boobies. I hope you checked out my iCard and felt yourself up. And make John feel himself up. And just take care of yourself. Enjoy the video collaboration. We're going to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.